Hi, I'm Richard from Frozen Well. Welcome back to the 8th devlog for my game Ghost Blaster. So, last time I said I was going to get basic rooms done for each of the different types of room in the game. I've made a start on this, but it's not the most interesting thing to be doing at the moment, as I currently only have three hazards created to add to these rooms, these being a spike pit, a slime pit, and the spider that moves around platforms. So, after making a few of the types needed, I decided to put this on hold until I have more hazards, enemies and decorations created to make the rooms interesting. Otherwise, I just feel that I'll need to add to or amend the rooms that I can currently create. I got on with getting the player able to fire bullets again. First off, I created a basic sprite for the bullet and then created a scene for the bullet. This scene consists of an area 2D with a sprite, collision shape and a timer. The bullet just keeps moving in a direction that's been chosen. The timer is set to auto start, when it times out it destroys the bullet so it doesn't go on forever. I also hooked up the body entered signal to destroy the bullet when it hits another object. Next, with the bullet created, I set up a signal for creating the bullets. I've done it this way so that the signal can be used to spawn any projectiles in the game as it takes the bullet or object you want to spawn, its position and direction of movement. I've set up an effect spawner node in the game that I'll use to spawn various bullets, explosions and visual effects. Here you can see that I connect to the signal and when it's called I create an instance of the bullet that has been passed and set its position and direction of movement. Finally, I need to call this signal when the player presses the fire button. So I added a fire function to my player script and passed the player's bullet global position that I want to spawn the bullet at which is taken from the position of a position 2D node in the player scene and the direction either left or right is passed in as either a minus one for left and a plus one for right which is taken from the sprite's scale value. Here we see the player firing bullets. Next I updated the sprite that I was using for the player's bullet. Here you see the new bullet sprite, it's got a bit more detail than the old white square. Next, I got to work on creating a trail effect that spawned as the bullet moves along. Here you can see this effect working. It leaves a white shadow behind the bullet as it goes. The final thing that needed adding to the player's firing mechanism for now was a visual muzzle flash when the player fires the bullet, and then an effect that is created when the bullet hits objects like walls and platforms. These final effects are shown in action in the video. One of the things that I'm wanting to add in the game is background items that interact with the player and help to bring the castle environment to life. The first of these that I've chosen to create is a hanging banner. In the previous version of the game that I was working on they just hung with no animation. I decided it'd be nice if the player ran past them and they moved. So I got to work in a sprite on an animation for this. The animation is now complete and implemented in the game. It still needs a bit of work, but as you can see here it just adds a bit more life to the environment. I intend to add a lot of other objects to the environment that have interactions of this style. Next I decided that it was about time that I had at least one room created for each of the different room types in the game. Here you can see all the different room types that go into making up a level in Ghost Blaster. Some of these are far from the finished article, but they are there now as a starting point. Here you can see all these rooms now being used by the level generation algorithm to create various levels for the game. Finally this time I've been doing a bit of experimentation with the art for the game. I've been for a while now considering upgrading the graphics in the game to have more detail. So instead of just thinking about it I decided to mock up some upgraded graphics to help me decide what direction to go in with the art. I started off by creating a simple walk animation. Next, after getting to a point that I was happy with the animation, I started to add some detail to it. Here we have for now the finished animation and with some detail added. It's still a work in progress and if I do decide to upscale the graphics it will need some more work. As well as creating a walk animation, I've created single frames for idle, jumping and falling. Here you can see the new player sprite and a few other upgraded graphics in the game. I'm still not sure whether to stay with the smaller sprites or carry on with the upgraded ones. Let me know in the comments what you all think. 
Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the devlog please hit the like and subscribe button so you can follow my progress. I really appreciate it.